Meta or formerly known as Facebook that we all love to use. Uh, so they have been scrutinized uh, over their content moderation policies, especially in the context of the ongoing Israel-Palestine uh, conflict. A new report released by the human rights uh, watchdog, uh, HRW or Human Rights Watch. And this report and its findings uh, which are based on extensive research and data analysis reveal a complex web of challenges that impact user freedoms and demand our urgent attention all of our social media users but this report points out that a substantial number of uh, uh, you know uh, requests for content removal and the policy has been prompted by quote unquote voluntary requests from various governments. Hello and welcome to New Wave Global. I'm back with another update and today I'm going to talk about a new report released by the human rights uh, watchdog uh, HRW or Human Rights Watch uh, that actually uh, takes into uh, account uh, the policies of, of uh, technology companies, uh, especially Meta or formerly known as Facebook that we all love to use, uh, which is uh, uh, Meta is the parent company of these pop popular social media platforms, uh, Facebook, Instagram, and they even, I think, own WhatsApp, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so they have been scrutinized uh, over their content moderation policies, especially in the context of the ongoing Israel-Palestine uh, conflict. Well, it's hardly an Israel-Palestine conflict because, you know, they're not two equals. I mean, Israel is a powerful country with a powerful military, while Palestine is what, you know, hardly a state or, you know, uh, it's under siege all the time. It's under uh, threat and attacks. And this report and its findings, uh, which are based on extensive research and data analysis, reveal a complex web of challenges that impact user freedoms and demand our urgent attention, all of our social media users, perhaps those who regulate these platforms, because, you know, we had earlier thought, oh, Lord, they, uh, with the increase in social media sort of technologies uh, and digital uh, uh, platforms, uh, people will have better access to information. They would be able to learn more, be better informed, but actually, no, censorship has also seeped into uh, these platforms. And the concern, key concern highlighted in the Human Rights Watch report is the lack of transparency surrounding government requests for content removal. Meta, in compliance with its quote-unquote community standards and local laws, regularly takes down content from uh, the platforms, uh, uh, social media platforms. But this report points out that a substantial number of, uh, uh, you know, uh, requests for content removal and the policy has been prompted by, quote unquote, voluntary requests from various governments. These requests often originating from non-judicial bodies such as the law enforcement authorities, they sidestep legal procedures and lack transparency and accountability inherent in such legal processes whereby you determine what content needs to stay, what content needs to be removed. The Human Rights Watch report singles out the Israeli government's proactive approach to seeking content removal from social media platforms. The Israeli cyber unit operating within the state attorney's office consistently issues voluntary removal requests to Meta. Notably, compliance rates with these requests have been consistently high, reaching 92% in 2018. In 2021, the cyber unit issued 5,990 removal or restriction requests to Meta platforms with an 82% compliance rate. It, this is huge. This is not a joke, viewers. Uh, I mean, a government or its executive body tells Meta, hey, take this down. And it's done in a non-transparent, in a non-judicial manner, because you have to obviously uh, check uh, on what uh, has been re requested 
So the recent data as of November 14th of 2023 indicates a surge in content takedown requests related to uh, Israel-Palestinian uh, hostilities and the violence that is going on. The prosecutor's office reportedly sent 9,500 content removal requests to major social media platforms with nearly 60% directed at Meta or Facebook's parent company. Despite the considerable volume of requests, there's lack a lack of transparency regarding specific policies that have been violated and the outcomes of these requests. So, for example, if a hospital is being bombed in Gaza, uh, if a school is being targeted, if UN workers are being targeted, if they are being humiliated, I mean, should that information not reach the world? Or should it somehow threaten uh, Israeli state or Israeli government? I mean, these are the, these are the kind of parameters that you need before you decide on content uh, removal or takedown requests. And then automation is another, another area which has become a major challenge according to Human Rights Watch. It says that, you know, it's a significant factor contributing to the challenges outlined uh, in that uh, excellent report. Meta heavily relies on automated tools for content moderation, with over 90% of content deemed viol violative uh, is proactively detected by these tools. Or, you know, they are in popular parlance known as the bots or the uh, robotic uh, sort of uh, uh, checks. However, the report underscores the limitations of automation in understanding the contextual factors, you know, what's the history, what's the uh, the area we're dealing with, leading to the removal of non-violative content. Users reported instances where their peaceful comments on the Israeli-Palestinian situation were erroneously flagged and removed. I know many people in my uh, networks who have complained of that, their Facebook pages either being, uh, being suspended or or being uh, posts being removed for violating, uh, and the policy is not clear. The human rights implications of content censorship, especially in the context of Palestine, are a focal point of this report. Article 19 of the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights, or the ICCPR as it is known, uh, guarantees the right to freedom of expression which extends to online spaces. As I said earlier, uh, you know, uh, freedom of, of information is vital uh, to have any, any sort of a healthy uh, global or, or national uh, society or social structure. And the Human Rights Watch report argues that unduly restricting or suppressing peaceful content supporting Palestine infringes on this fundamental right. Content restrictions and shadow banning quote unquote, which is a very popular term. Uh, shadow banning uh, basically means where a user's content becomes less visible without explanation are flagged as particularly distressing for users. The report notes that Meta does not formally acknowledge the practice of shadow banning, leaving users in the dark and without adequate access to complaint mechanisms and remedies. So basically, Human Rights Watch has done a huge favor to us all. I mean, this is, of course, in the context, immediate context of Palestine, but it it, it relates to many other uh, issues uh, that we face. You know, we know the role of Meta in uh, spreading vaccine disinformation when COVID hit on even in terms of, uh, you know, uh, vaccination uh, for children where a lot of uh, anti-vax uh, sort of sentiments were amplified. Uh, we know what it did in the U.S. election in 2016. There were, all of that has been recorded, you know, the, all the manipulation of uh, public sentiment, political sentiment. We know what has happened in Myanmar, uh, where a genocide of Rohingya and their mass expulsion was enabled by uh, social media te or technology platforms such as Meta. And in India, a huge country, a big democracy ostensibly, where the ruling party has... Uh, uh, sort of uh, hooked up, for, sorry for the lack of a better phrase, uh, with these technology companies to push their divisive agenda 
and, uh, you know, influence public opinion. So HRW in the context of Palestine gives some recommendations, and I'll just c c conclude with that. It urges an overall of the dangerous organizations and individuals or DOI policy, increased transparency on government requests, improved automation transparency. Certainly, you can tweak the technology, you can polish it and refine it to get better results and enhanced access to remedies for users facing content removal. I think it's a vital human right of anyone, everywhere and anywhere, if they want to speak against injustice, if they want to highlight something which is wrong, these companies must not shadow ban or, out, or outrightly remove such content. HRW also underscores the responsibility of social media companies to align their content moderation policies with international human rights standards. Remember, they apply to all the international human rights law, the various protocols, covenants do not just apply to governments. They apply to businesses as well. They apply to non-governmental uh, bodies as well. And they, they I mean, if we, if we want to live in a civilized uh, world which, which follows some sort of norms, I know, I know it's being idealistic because they're being violated every day as we speak, but we have to strive towards that. So, uh, as Human Rights Watch says, we have to ensure a transparent, accountable, and rights-respecting digital space. And I should thank Human Rights Watch for that, but I think it is time that we hold these big technology platforms, these uh, big companies like Google to account, that they just cannot censor, uh, apply censorship uh, uh, you know, without a clear, transparent policy. So I'll just end here for today. Not a great, uh, uh, you know, a thing to talk about, but we have to talk about it because, I mean, uh, we all operate in these digital spaces increasingly. And uh, if they're not free, if they're not open, then why be here in the first place?